Mastitis is, uh, is caused by bacteria that get up into the udder or the mammary gland, uh, the working end of a dairy cow, and this creates uh, inflammation or a response of our immune system and as such uh, causes loss in production uh, of that cow, but more importantly it's also a, uh, a problem for that cow's health and welfare. Uh, so besides just the lost milk production, which is certainly a concern for the dairy producer, also a concern for the dairy producer is that this cow is in discomfort, uh, may lead to premature culling, may lead to uh, problems in uh, her fertility, her reproductive fertility, and in more severe cases may actually lead to her death. So uh, this is a, uh, a bundle of problems that any dairy producer must face on an everyday basis concerning for their uh, care of their cows. Also mastitis creates, the, or creates a situation in which the quality of milk is impaired. And thus uh, from a processor standpoint, it's, it's not the same kind of quality of milk in terms of shelf life and the amount of uh, oh, cheese and yogurt that could be processed from milk. And finally for the consumer, uh, again wanting to know that they are getting the uh, very best quality and wholesome product that they can get, uh, mastitis uh, can affect uh, the product that they're purchasing as well. Like any other animal, when dairy cows succumb to a bacterial infection, such as a pneumonia or a mastitis, antibiotics can be an important tool to help bring them back into health and to improve the well-being of that animal. However, there are consequences, especially when we use antibiotics in a food producing as a, like a dairy cow. Milk from a treated cow must be withheld from market until she's clear of the drug. And every tanker load that goes into a plant, milk truck tanker load, is tested for antibiotics. Likewise, there are concerns, however, with a cow who may be culled for beef and go to market that she may also have residues for the meat. And this also is tested and this can, of course, impart the food safety or potential food safety if these animals have residues in that tissue as well. But even with those safeguards in place, we're always looking for ways to reduce antibiotic use, partially just from the logistics on the farm and the, the labor and the time needed, but also we always have to be looking forward rather than over our shoulder and realize that we in animal agriculture also play a role in the concern over resistance to antimicrobials or antibiotic drugs among bacteria. And while this is certainly an ongoing problem and, and a topic that we really haven't resolved what role dairy cattle play in this concern. Nonetheless, we should do whatever we can for those of us who work on dairy farms to reduce our contribution to this emerging problem. We've known for a long time how to reduce mastitis. Uh, simple things like clean, dry, comfortable cows, uh, proper milking techniques, uh, prudent use of antibiotics, some other management tools, uh, and not that we have identified all the different uh, components uh, or the scientific aspects that may go into mastitis control, but to the struggle that we make sometimes is how do we take that science and actually put it into practice on the farm. And not only uh, so many programs are targeted for management decisions and the dairy producers themselves, but how do we better motivate and uh, incorporate employee involvement so they actually put into practice some of the mass task control uh, uh, practices that should be done on a farm on an everyday basis and do that in a long-term sustainable uh, fashion.